a list of artifacts that can be worn or carried, a loss that cannot be recorded in many pages, a notebook cleaned and dried in the sun, along the edges of the field in streams and gutters, an archaeology of DNA and scarce belongings, annotations in the margins, are in addition to the 1,756 photographs published by the ICRC, artifact in the moment of its making. Become implicated in each other's sentience. Belong to a woman, this bracelet bright along the bone. Belonging as sinew and syntax. Book of belongings, containing photographs of possessions. Bowls, church steeples, and radiators, there comes to be an ongoing interaction. Bring her out of the earth. Bring him into the sun. Bring them. Carried in the pockets of her winter coat, sea glass and stones. Carried out of the earth like a child. Carry him in your arms, bring her into the sun. Cases of unidentified remains are in addition to the 1,756 photographs. Clay sticks to hem of coat and sleeves. Close eyes, close mouth. Closed with quiet words. Clothed in a language that cannot stretch so thin. Desire, hunger, touch are not just passively grasped. Diary that records the small hours. Disappeared when the town was overrun in July 1995. Drawn in blue-black ink. Drawn on paper that can remember the precise locations. Drawn out over years that are endured. Dried in the sun. Dried out sticks of words. Earth of roots, seeds, seepage, litter, eyeglass. Elements oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium. Enter the interior of other persons as the content of perception and emotion. Entered there in the object of perception. Entered there where it must be written. Even a scrap of cloth or DNA as record. Every word collected. Everything is gained and nothing is lost. Facts of sentience projected outward into the artifact. Fingers of light sifting the leaves. Floral print of a scarf, stitched ox eye, violet, wild carrot. Flowering that comes in the spring. Flowers that are mostly small and white. Forensic experts from the Podrinia Identification Project in Tuzla. Found in several locations. Found in the cracks, these small white flowers. Gained and nothing is lost. Gesture of a hand in conversation. Glint of tools at dusk. Glove with traces of dirt, spores, clay, blood. Grammar to join the scattered words. Grave where you scatter seeds. Grow wildflowers. Grows dark has entered into the interior of the other person's seeing. Hat drawn over contours of hair, skin, bone threaded with vein. Hat lined with felt for warmth, having small stitches. Here a hand labored, here in this earth. Hundreds of artifacts worn and carried, husks. I was this one and no other. Identity card with name and photograph and number. In memory where the timber of a voice is held in search of what has been taken, in the moment of its making with loom, press, spool, thread. Ink blooms and clots on the page. Interior facts of sentience projected outward into the artifact in the moment of its making. Interior of other persons as the content of perception and emotion. Jar of small white flowers, jeweled beads of rain, jewelry and other personal effects found on the exhumed bodies. Join beads, shards, words as they slot together. Join stems, join leaves. Journey to these precise locations. Just as it was before, just the rain, berries, stones, and the night. Keep looking, kept in a pocket, key to open a door, key to sorrow, kin drawn from marrow, kindling of the small wrist bones, Kindness where it is found, known as this one and no other. Labor recalled in each join, seam, stitch. Language paired to the line. Lattice of ribs. Letter with news from a daughter. List of belongings. Lithium, strontium, aluminum, silicon, lead. Looking for their missing loved ones. Lore of those who are missing, that they will one day be found. Made of sand, lime, and soda ash. Marble with a twist of color, kept in a pocket. Marked with scuffs and scratches. Materials of earth. 
minutes counted, molybdenum, fluorine, chlorine, iodine, moment of its making, more than 1,600 persons looking for their missing loved ones. Name inscribed in a notebook, never meet on this earth, non omnis moriar, not alone, not just the rain, berries, stones, and the night. Notebook cleaned and dried in the sun, notes in blue-black ink, nothing is lost. Of those who are missing, offering of words, on this earth, ordered rows, other person seeing entered there, oval buttons sewn by hand, over now, overrun in July 1995. Pages of photographs, persons as the content of perception and emotion, persons looking for their missing loved ones, phosphorescence you lifted from the sea in strings of light, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, sodium, magnesium, photograph of a woman on the shore, protocols for lymphocyte separation and inoculation, published its second book of belongings. Quadratic equation written on a scrap of paper, quarrel that will never end, quell hope, quell sorrow, query sent on official paper, quest for those who are missing, questions you keep asking, quiet as breath, quietness. Rain buries stones and the night, rain that began to fall when we first met, related to the Srebrenica missing, ring engraved with initials, risen from wet earth, rituals to join together and to release the dead, roots grow, rots now. Saturated ground, second book of belongings containing photographs of possessions. Seeing is seeing of X. Sentience projected outward into the artifact in the moment of its making. Shoe with traces of mud and clay, signs in the broken earth, the scattering of leaves. Silence when we once talked. Silent this night. T-shirt put on without thought one morning, taken without warning. Tell me how it was when we first met. The last time I saw you. The rain, berries, stones, and the night. To date, 139 objects concerning 64 cases have been recognized in the new book. To join together and to release the dead. Transformation of a weapon into a tool. Everything is gained and nothing is lost. Umbrella with torn skin. Under a deluge of rain, the muddy field. Under the belief they will one day be found. Understand that you are not forgotten. Unidentified remains and are in addition to the 1,756 photographs published. Unless you come to me in a dream. Until I come to you. Until then. Vacant field, vastness of time, vein of words chiseled out, vest made of cotton, view of dried grasses and wildflowers, the horizon's blue line, vigil at dusk, vigilance, voice heard at the edges of sleep. We shall never meet again in this world. Weapon into a tool, everything is gained and nothing is lost. Where they will be found, which is part of the Missing Persons Institute, will start the procedure who disappeared when the town was overrun in July 1995. Wildflowers in a field, wristwatch to measure the hours. Write this down. X has entered into the interior of the other person seeing, entered there in the object of perception. X to mark the location where you were found. X stitched along the torn seam. XY karyotype drawn from marrow. Examine every photograph in possession. Exhaustion to overcome. Exist in the book of memory. Exist in the rain, berries, stones, and the night. You are here. You are not forgotten. You are this one and none other. You come to me in a dream. You keep asking. You lifted phosphorescence from the sea in strings of light. You scattered seeds. You were my ground. Zenith bright above the earth where you were found. Zero drift of loss. Zinc, selenium, manganese, cobalt, iron. Zipper jacket to hold in warmth. Zona pellucida gathering light as the embryo forms. Zone of memory. Zone of the missing. Zone of the night. 
Cradle Song The rain pools in your small skull, so new it gapes in its dressing of pale skin, collects this quiet sound. Here you shelter in its cracked hollow, sutured with blue threads and gauze, hematite stains on the walls, as if in the caves of Las Galles of Neo. A synapse flares down Neanderthal lines, a handprint, a horse outflung, then dies, guttering into shadow. Down it comes, drumming, drumming, races the tide. Listen, the bloods hush and sluice through channels wormed in bone. The sea rushes in, spill of sound over lip and drum, rushes out and sighs in whispers through little holes. These holes I finger, place my mouth to your ocarina skull. And what thin wires attached at temple and wrist play your startles and grimaces, vacant smiles, marionette frowns, these life throws. Then let go as you slip away, your fuzzed head on my collarbone, like the bluish bud of a poppy, sodden with drumming rain. Hush, hush, listen to its song, gentle sluice of drumming rain. On the Ordering of Chaotic Bodies of Poetry. One, Ovid knew about this, spilt blood of Adonis to stanch the anemone's pale throat. A tongueless woman hatched into a bird takes flight. Two, and Callimachus, after the ink had bled into the cracks in his fingers, the cross-hatched fibers of his skin, his catalog complete, could he still hear in the rustle of papyrus their clamorous voices rising above the lyre? Three, Aristophanes arranged the Pindaric corpus into 17 books, hymns and paeans in one book each, dithyrams, processionals, maiden songs, and poems for dancing in two books each, with perhaps an added book for purely secular maiden songs, four books of victory songs, and a book each of encomia and threnoi. He performs a careful anatomy, amygdala, vitreous, heart, every organ observed, the spinal column opened to reveal the twined sinews, the fascicles of nerves, before fluids pool and obscure. Four, so much more orderly than Sappho, strips of lyric used to line sarcophagi, lovers' words poured into desert sands. We scour the rubbish tips at Oxyrhynchus for her remains. Five, I can hear their voices, like a fine whisper of rain coming over the field. I read late into the night. 14 March, 1917, Ronville Observation Post. Looking out towards no man's land, what I thought first was a piece of burnt paper or something turned out to be a bat shaken at last by shells from one of the last sheds in Ronville. From the War Diary of Edward Thomas. Six, their whispers in the archives. A small Walker's back loop pocket book bound in pigskin and priced at two shillings. The covers and the pages are concaved and creased, suggesting that he was carrying the diary when he was killed at an observation post on the 9th April, 1917, by a shell blast during the opening barrages of the Battle of Arras. Seven, stitch the torn spine closed with quiet words and lines of moving light and shadow. Smooth the creased skin over bone white pages and clean the concave wounds with cherry petals soaked in rainwater. Eight, Nadezhda Mandelstam hid her husband's poems in cushions and saucepans, kettles and baskets and shoes, interleaved in the pages of her dissertation on linguistics. And when the idyllic era of cushions had passed, she hid them in memory as she worked nights at the textile factory in Strunino. Nine, some is that blooming like Gilia after desert rains. 10, and this one too. A visiting card with the name Dr. Miklo Shradnoti printed on it, 
an ID card stating the mother's name as Alona Grosh, father's name illegible, born in Budapest, May 5th, 1909. Cause of death, shot in the nape. In the back pocket of the trousers, a small notebook was found, soaked in the fluids of the body and blackened by wet earth. This was cleaned and dried in the sun. Coroner's report on corpse number 12, exhumed from a mass grave in the village of Abda, Hungary, at the end of the Second World War. 11. Take this fluid seep notebook in your hands. See where the ink blooms and clots on the page. This tissue-thin poppy, risen from wet earth, cleaned and dried in the sun. 12. The gracile fascicles carrying fine shivers to her brain as she stitched each poem into its booklet. 13. A return to biology, poems slotted into kingdom, genus, species, sliced and stained with methylene blue and mounted on a slide, a taxonomy, a poem laboratory. 14. Japanese stab binding, Ethiopian, Coptic, stitched, glued. These are the principal kinds of binding. 15. A.W. Lewis. 1957, recommends the following tools. Bone folder, glue kettle, needles, brushes, hammer, and tenon saw. A good sharp pen knife, a paring knife and strop, an awl. Sewing frame, nipping press, standing press, lying press, and plow. 16. I hear their voices when the rain falls and chestnuts clatter on the roof. Their clamor as the corms and roots and seeds rot in wet earth. 17. And then there was Liu Bai Kang, sentenced to 18 years for counter-revolutionary incitement, who attached words to the legs of locusts. Tyranny, long live freedom, and flung them over the walls of his prison into the air. Ash. For example, when Serbian nationalists in the hills circling Sarajevo firebombed the National and University Library of Bosnia and Herzegovina, 1.5 million books burned, including the card catalogs, all bibliographic trace, including the archives of the Serbian poet Aleksa Šantić and the Croatian poet Silvia Strahomir Krančević. A few books were saved, carried by hand, and a few, the sun veiled in a pile of gray from their burning, could still be read one last time as pages floated down, black letters burning on gray. You could, it is said, catch them in your hand like snowflakes and read the words as they melted to ash. Russian Notebook, Moscow, 1918-1920. At 10 o'clock the day is over. Sometimes I chop and saw wood for tomorrow. At 11 or 12, I am also in bed happy with the lamp right next to my pillow, the silence, a notebook, a cigarette, and sometimes bread. Marina Tsvetaeva, Notebook Entry, Moscow, 1919. Telegraph lines the words sing down at the speed of light, an open vein. Moscow, November, 1919. See her there, waking in gray light in the attic room of her former house to split wood and start the fire. She is alone in revolutionary Moscow with two young girls to care for. Potatoes boil in the samovar she stokes with coals. Her brown flannel dress singed by flakes of ash and cigarettes. Fingerless mittens. Donated lunch tickets. Everyone afraid for her and her children. So impractical a copper mess kit and a milk can to collect the free meals from Prechestenka Street, house keys strung around her neck, the cold, banisters and attic beams chopped up for fuel, the exhilaration. On a trip to Tanvar Gubernia to study handmade embroidery, she barters matches, soap, and chintz, really rose-colored damask, for 18 pounds of wheat, 10 pounds of flour, three pounds of lard, three wooden dolls, and a necklace of dark amber beads, which you cannot eat. Her first daughter, Ariadna, Alia, is born in 1912. 
By 1919, she is already writing poems. Tough arteries, thick tubes flush with life. Thin veins of dark red blood that seek the heart. Moscow, November 1918. Narkomnats, People's Commissariat of Nationalities. Information section in the Rostov's house from war and peace. Open the door, just a glimpse. Pink walls and desk under chandeliers. Her third day on the job. She's compiling a newspaper archive that no one will read. She paraphrases reports of prisoners of war, the movements of the Red Army, the White Guard, advances, retreats, all copied onto cards. The clippings are pasted onto sheets she captions in lilac pencil. When some clippings are lost, she makes them up. There are lines for everything. A line for milk on Kudrinskaya Street. A line for salted fish on Povarskaya. A line for hemp seed oil on the Arbat. A line into the cellar for half-thawed, half-rotten potatoes she pulls home on Alia's sled with blue reins and bells. Blue shadowed line the runner carves in snow. Her second daughter, Irina, is born in 1917. There is something wrong. At two and a half, she can barely walk or speak, but she can sing. Moscow, November 1919. Lunch ticket, milk can, copper mess kit. She takes Alia with her to collect the meal. Ties Irina to a chair so that she won't get into trouble while they're gone. A line of hunger, of indifference, desperation, the length of a cord that ties a child to a chair. Moscow, December, 1919. She places Alia and Irina in the Kuntsevo orphanage with the hope they can feed her daughters through the winter. She takes refuge in the shelter of the line, its cadences, its nooks and crevices. <laughs> Represented on a graph, Sveteyeva's work would exhibit a curve, or rather a straight line, rising at almost a right angle because of her constant effort to raise the pitch a note higher an idea higher, or more precisely, an octave and a faith higher. She always carried everything she has to say to its conceivable and expressible end. Joseph Brodsky. Poems are the tracks by which I enter your soul, but your soul recedes, and I get impatient. I jump ahead, blindly on the off chance, and then I wait in trepidation. Will it turn my way? Sveteva, letter to Pasternak. Lines jump the poem's tracks, pitched onto the walls of her room. Moscow, January, 1920. She finds Alia deathly ill at the orphanage and brings her home on a borrowed sledge. Poetry is language paired to the line, flesh almost to the bone. Moscow, February, 1920. Irina dies of starvation in the Kuntsevo orphanage, two years and seven months old. The line of a neck slender as a dandelion stem. Moscow, February 1920. One last glimpse. Midnight. The lamp drawn close. The notebook closed. Look away. See the stain of words on the shadowed walls. In the long hours of darkness, Baghdad shakes to the constant low rumble of B-52s. In a hotel room by the Tigris, a man writes. A jar with a clutch of flowers trembles on the windowsill as the air pressure drops. While out in the desert, soldiers hide in furrows of night. A pale red stain appears. Its penumbra blooms and is extinguished. The man writes about the war about the smell of burnt flesh along the road north of Nasiria, about this dark sound. The air pressure drops again. A tremor runs through the water in the jar, the thin stalks, the petals. Membrane of ice on the windows of this room in Montreal. I cut my hands, peer into the television's blue cave and see pale slivers of tracer fire in the desert. Missiles scattered like black seeds, a pale red stain on the horizon that pours back into the dark. Through a live street cam, somewhere in Baghdad, the shadows of men. I can hear them, 
They call to one another in their language. And at dawn, the birds sing. <laughs>